Now let's have a look at charging. Exchange points need to be run at minimal cost to its member participants. Common examples we see today are the data center hosting the exchange point for free, or IX members paying a flat annual fee on a cost recovery basis. And sometimes for the larger exchange points, we see differential pricing per port, really depending on the cost of the line card and to provide the bandwidth required. Exchange points do not charge for traffic crossing the switch fabric. The whole point of an exchange point is that they are a peering enabler, encouraging as much traffic as possible between members. So let's look at each of the charging models. The first one is where the data center hosts the exchange point for free. The data center covers all costs relating to the IX. They even provide the switch and the supporting infrastructure. They provide the operator cover because they benefit from the business that IX members and the customers bring to the DC. And they benefit from the prestige of hosting the exchange point and its ancillary services. This is the ideal scenario, where the IX does not charge members for anything at all. Perhaps the closest exchange point to this ideal scenario is the Seattle Internet Exchange. Another charging scenario is where the IX members pay a flat fee, where each member pays a small amount towards the IX membership. How this works is that the fee covers the cost of the switch and the Ethernet ports on it, the cost of the operator support, the data center cost. So this will be power, air conditioning, and rent for the co-location space. Cost of the IX member association, there may be some administrative requirements, and a small contingency for new equipment and upgrades. The total annual cost is shared equally amongst members. The more members, potentially lower costs for each member. And the other charging model is the differential pricing per port, where the exchange point member pays according to the port speed they require. Note, this is port speed, not traffic. So we see this happening most often in the biggest internet exchange points, where one line card may handle four 100 gig Ethernet ports, or one line card may handle 24 10 gig Ethernet ports, or one line card may handle 96 1 gig Ethernet ports, for sake of example. The pricing of a 96 port 1 gig E card is probably a tenth of the price of a 24 port 10 gig Ethernet. So the relative port cost is then passed on to the participants, plus a share in the cost of the switch chassis as well, plus all the costs mentioned in the flat fee model earlier. IX members will pay according to the cost of provisioning their port speed. An example of this might be the net nod exchange points in Sweden. Just some notes about charging before we finish this section. Smaller or new exchange points generally should be free or flat fee for members. A one rack unit switch supporting 100 meg, 1 gig and 10 gig on all ports is sufficient. Many vendors have many types of switches that meet this specification. And the members are responsible for providing suitable optics. Today, this is considered the standard of how we start new internet exchange points. Larger or longer established exchange points have moved away from the 1RU switch model to the chassis-based switches, where line cards have different costs. Members will quite often pay contribution to the cost of the line card, hence the port charge, and often it includes the cost of the optics as well.